The Sable Points Lighthouse Keepers Association welcomes you to the Lettington North Breakwater Light. The structure around you was built in 1924 and is the most recent of many lights that were installed over the years to guide ships into the Ludington Harbor. Its unique design has enabled it to withstand probably the worst seas experienced on Lake Michigan, with the possible exception of Michigan City, Indiana. Let's explore together the history of the wonderful Ludington Harbor and the light towers that have marked its entrance. As the need for lumber to construct both small settlements and large cities like Chicago and Milwaukee exploded during the mid-1800s, the pine forests of western Michigan provided plentiful timber for the booming lumber industry. Ports arose along Lake Michigan, one of North America's most important waterways for transporting lumber by ship to the communities that needed it. Soon, sawmills, logging camps, and shipping docks sprang up throughout the area and ships lined up to carry processed lumber through Pierre Marquette Lake's shallow channel and out into Lake Michigan. In 1867, the Army Corps of Engineers dredged sand from the channel and installed wooden cribs on both sides of the river mouth to make the channel more navigable. To mark the Pierre Marquette Harbor and improve shipping safety, the Lighthouse Board requested $6,000 in funds for a light at the entrance to the harbor and a keeper's dwelling on the shore. In 1870, Congress approved funds to install a fixed red fifth order Fresnel lens in a 25 foot tall pyramid shaped wooden structure at the end of the South Pier. An elevated timber walkway was added to enable the keeper to walk out to the light in stormy weather. Unfortunately, the land for a keeper's dwelling was not secured. So keeper William Gerard erected a small shack at the base of the South Pier while funding requests for a more substantial dwelling continued. Shipping in the Great Lakes grew significantly during the last half of the 19th century and into the 20th century. In Ludington, harbor traffic took on a new dimension in 1874 when a railroad car ferry began its service from Ludington to Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Lake Michigan dealt Ludington a heavy blow in 1876 when a December storm destroyed the pierhead and light. Between 1876 and 1924, the piers were extended and the light was repositioned on the South Pier in an attempt to improve access to the harbor. 1895 saw the addition of a steam-powered fog signal housed in an iron sheath frame building to the South Pier near the Beacon. This addition required the assignment of an assistant keeper and a second assistant was added in 1897. The long-awaited duplex keeper's dwelling was completed in August of 1900. The current arrowhead configuration of the Ludington Harbor began to take shape in 1906 when Congress appropriated $839,000 to protect the harbor entrance and create a large harbor of refuge to shelter ships during severe weather. Timber cribs were constructed on shore, towed into place and filled with stone. These cribs provided the foundation for the timber breakwaters that were fastened above them with large bolts. With expanded ferry traffic carrying railroad cars across Lake Michigan, it became clear that the current light and fog signal configuration on the South Breakwater did not adequately mark the new harbor opening. Numerous attempts to achieve optimal lighting determined that the main beacon should be moved to the North Breakwater. In 1924, the current structure went into service at the end of the North Breakwater. The North Breakwater Light is a uniquely designed white 57-foot steel plate tower over a steel skeleton in the shape of a four-sided pyramid. Four round porthole windows dot each of the three decks. A relatively small diaphone fog signal was built into the base of the landward side of the tower and powered by a one-story machinery room upon which the entire structure rests. To protect the structure from some of the worst storm waves on the Great Lakes, the concrete foundation was formed with angled surfaces designed to deflect the waves up and away from the building. The effectiveness of this design is reflected in some of the most dramatic storm wave photos of the North Breakwater Light. A new keeper's dwelling was also constructed on the north side of the channel on Loomis Street. To reduce cost, the Lighthouse Service had been working with several American glass manufacturers in an effort to create glass lenses of comparable quality to the French Fresnel lens. The Macbeth Evans Glass Company of Pittsburgh supplied the Ludington Light with an American-made fourth-order lens. 
The North Breakwater light has always been electrified. Yet, you'll notice that the lantern room is equipped with provisions found in older flame-powered lighthouses. The vents that provided airflow and a place for a chimney that allowed heat and soot to escape. This is because the North Breakwater Light's lantern room was taken from an older dismantled lighthouse. An early example of recycling, you might say. In 1931, the length of the two piers was reduced by 400 feet to allow vessels more room to maneuver. Nevertheless, in 1939, the car ferry City of Flint missed the opening and plowed into the South Breakwater, completely destroying its light. A 31-foot steel tower equipped with an electric light was installed in its place. The North Breakwater light was automated in 1972, and by 1990, railroad cars were no longer transported across Lake Michigan. However, the SS Badger still carries passengers and vehicles across the lake between Ludington and Manitowoc, Wisconsin. During a 1994 renovation project, the concrete breakwater supporting the North Light suddenly settled, tilting the tower at an approximate 3.5 degree angle to the north-northeast. The Army Corps of Engineers determined that the structure remained stable and the cost of straightening it would be excessive. A concrete-filled crib was installed to further ensure stability, and the slight tilt of the tower is still visible to the naked eye. The tilt caused the beam from the lantern's Fresnel lens to be out of focus. This problem was resolved on October 17, 1995, when the Fresnel lens was removed and replaced with a modern 300mm acrylic optic. The Fresnel lens was displayed at White Pine Village for several years. After being restored in 2016, the lens was moved to its current location at the Port of Ludington Maritime Museum. In 2006, the light was changed to green to make it easier for boaters to distinguish it from the background lights of downtown Ludington. Employing a green light on the North Breakwater and a red light on the South Breakwater conforms with the Federal Waterways marking system. Mariners returning to port keep the green marker on their left and the red marker on their right. Thus, the longtime maritime phrase, red, right, returning. In 2005, the Ludington North Breakwater Light was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Following a review, the National Park Service transferred the light to the City of Ludington in May 2006. Shortly afterward, the City negotiated a partnership agreement with the Sable Points Lighthouse Keepers Association, which maintains the light and opens it to the public from late May through early September. So now, Generations of visitors who have trekked the half mile out to the light and wondered longingly what it looked like inside can see for themselves. The Sobel Points Lighthouse Keepers Association thanks you for visiting the Lettington North Breakwater Light. As a 501c3 nonprofit organization, Splicka also manages and invites you to visit Big Sobel Point Lighthouse in Ludington State Park, Little Sobel Point Lighthouse in Silver Lake State Park, and White River Light Station near Whitehall. All proceeds from tower tours, gift shops, and donations go directly to helping preserve those four lights. And we thank you sincerely for your support of our mission.